should I do? What could I do? What could I? That might be cool. Oh my goodness! What is this? Hmm. I think I might need to make a phone call. Yo, Brady Brian. Hey, Tig, what's going on? I got a little bit of a situation here. Yeah, what do you need? Yeah, of course I have him. You want me to go get him? Oh, you're killing me. Hold on. I became obsessed with Garbage Shell Kid cards in the summer of 1985. I say summer because I got the vast majority of my Garbage Pail Kid cards from the Ice Cream Man. He was like my dealer. I was hooked. He knew it. These are the actual Garbage Pail Kid cards that I got from the Ice Cream Man. They still smell the same. 80s sticker mixed with a little bit of powder from pink bubblegum. Created by Art Spiegelman, the Garbage Pail Kid cards are a series of sticker trading cards produced by Topps Company and originally released in 1985. They were designed to parody the Cabbage Patch Kid dolls, which were all the rage at the time. They don't walk, talk, wet their pants, or grow hair. They don't do much of anything. The Garbage Pail Kid cards were fracking huge in the 80s. I honestly can't emphasize enough just how big Garbage Pail Kid's cards were for a several year span. They were bigger than baseball cards, bigger than arcades or video games, bigger than Hot Wheels, bigger than Matchbox, bigger than Legos, Barbie, He-Man, and Big Wheels combined. And stores would be sold out completely for weeks. Meet Bullseye Barry and Pat Splat, or how about Mugged Marcus? They're just three in a whole family of Garbage Pail Kids, a collection of gruesome-looking creatures that real kids can't seem to get enough of, and stores run out in no time. We sold out of them. We can't keep them in stock. Everyone had binders filled with them. Kids would stick them on their doors, mailboxes, stop signs, lunchboxes, school books, with the brown paper bag cover because you couldn't put them right on the books or you'd get, like, suspended or something like that. Side note. Make sure you have doubles before you go sticking those things anywhere. And I'm talking both. Same picture, two different names. And didn't it always seem like there was one name that was harder to get than the other? I think they did that shit on purpose. I'd spend hours sitting on the floor looking through them. Most adults thought they were crude, but the art was actually pretty well done and clever. Look at all the colors! The colors! And you remember the backs had a giant poster-sized piece, which I was attempting to finish earlier. Some of the backs had wanted posters on them, and some of them had these interesting contracts that I don't know if anybody ever actually used them or signed them, but they were pretty funny. So you'd give these to people with their name written right here, and they would take this, and 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 then they would be officially the the big mouth. Just never shut up, never stop, ever. Yak, 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 yeah, okay. And let's not forget, because it was the 80s, there was gum in the packs. One of the fun things about it was trading doubles with your friends. The excitement of gaining a card you never held in your hands was exhilarating. I already have my secret. <laughs> what about the rush you got when you finally found the card with your name on it? I never did find a TIG card, but they definitely did have a few with my real name on it. During the height of the card's popularity, Garbage Hill Kids cards got so big that they got banned in a vast majority of schools. But so many youngsters have become so obsessed that the cards have been banned by some school principals. Monday morning, I don't want to see them in school. You can't even play with them at recess time. What are you supposed to do, just sit there? I mean, really. I mean, some of the art on these cards, right? I like that. You tell me that's not cool. You gonna tell me that's not cool? This was one of the harder ones for me to get. I sometimes wonder if these cards would have made it nowadays. So, we have to talk about the movie. Sorry. The commercial success of the trading cards led to the production of a live action movie. Yikes. This was one of those movies you looked forward to, and then you saw it, and it was so bad that you stopped caring about 
anything related to it. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating. I didn't stop collecting the cards because of a movie, but I could say that it definitely did something when the movie came out. It, 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 it. Give him a chance, Tangerine, you'll like it. Seeing Garbage Pail Kids on a screen in some sort of real life thing kind of was weird. It wasn't, it was unsettling. I know that there's some people out there that claim that they love it or they still watch it every year or something. Don't believe them, they're liars. They also attempted an animated television series in 1987, but it ended up getting postponed due to parental complaints, of course. Was it something we said? Maybe they both have a curfew. Though the cartoon did end up making a brief appearance years later, but by then, unfortunately, I think most of the excitement around collecting the cards and whatnot sort of faded by then. And your Garbage Pail Kid cards most likely ended up in an old shoebox or lunchbox or stuffed under a bed in the binder you kept them in just to be tossed in the garbage by your mom when you moved out. The one thing is, Garbage Pail Kid cards still have a pretty big fan base. And that's awesome. I know that because Brainy Brian is a frequent guest on our show. And he makes sure to remind us any chance he gets. All right, I'm back. Your poster should look something like this. You're missing some of these guys. Tell me which ones you need. I'll dig them out and maybe I'll send you a card or two, if you're lucky. So thanks for backpedaling with me. Let me know what your favorite Garbage Pail Kid cards were or if you collected them at all or what you'd like me to backpedal next. And thanks, Brainy Brian, for popping in. While I ran upstairs to grab those, I did uh, grab another quick thing. I was thinking about this, I wanted to show you. I don't think I ever showed you this. My... Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'm gonna go sit on the floor back over there and go through my garbage trail kids. I'm Tig, and you are. They don't need to have a chewing gum company or a bubble gum company sending them cards that show mutilation, cannibalism, torture. They're fun to look at. <laughs> the gross ones are the coolest. I think they do give ch kids a chance to let off steam together in a not inappropriate way, to be kind of anti-social and anti-conventional in a way that doesn't really hurt too badly. That teacher gets it.